Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to give you a tuning guide to one of my favourite cars of all time and arguably my favourite of S-Class, the McLaren F1. Now, um, this is a car that's not typically known and um, strong on the leaderboards or even in lobbies for that matter, but it's a car that I love so much that I've really turned it into a labour of love to make sure that we get a really strong build. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've been able to do with the car on the leaderboards. Okay guys, so having a look at the leaderboard here, we can see the, the McLaren F1, um, really strong round this track actually, managed to make the top 12 in Europe um, and we're up against some tough competition here. We have the GT40, Lotus Elise GT1, um, just flustering the top 100 on this board. Um, we also have a Selene S7 which we've managed to beat. Uh, Lotus 11, BMW M1 by Rossi, <laughs> absolute speed demon in that car, and um, another S7, so basically a lot of strong cars that are capable of um, really respectable times, both in lobbies as well as on the leaderboards. If we take a look at the world leaderboard, uh, as you can see, just even more GT40s and at least GT1s, so it's a pretty stacked leaderboard, all things considered, even the Dodge Viper 08, that's, that's a car that's like, it's verging on being an OP leaderboard car because there's so many tracks that it can actually hit the top 12 in, but um, you need good hands to do it. Um, so really happy to see the F1 so high up. Um, it's capable of really strong times around some other tracks as well that lend to both grip and speed. So if Road Atlanta is the best example of that type of track, this McLaren is able to hit top 50 times on Spa at Silverstone and Watkins Glen as well. That's Watkins Glen with the bus stop as well, so um, it could perform even better in the alternate version. But yeah, it's just an all round fantastic car. I've made it a very stable setup. And what I shall do now is take you through the lap and talk through how we got this time. Okay, so starting off, we want to position two wheels over the white line going into turn one. This is to make the curve as straight as possible for us. Don't be afraid to try and clip that outside curb. Then coming into turn two, we are going to graze over some of the grass and then coast through the corner. This one is very important that you clip the grass on both the right and then on the left so that you can carry more speed. Coming into this uphill left-hander, you need to uh, modulate the throttle quite a bit. As you can see, we barely keep it within the white line there. Um, the car's very stable, but Road Atlanta is very unforgiving if you don't take the perfect line. Here, you want to dip early into the turn. Chicane, very important that you brake earlier than you think and accelerate before you hit the apex. This is so that you can straighten out sooner um, and make the most of this, what feels like an eternity on the straight of Road Atlanta. Um, I think the car actually uh, gets in excess of like 180 miles per hour uh, by the time we hit the end straight. Uh, 185, 187, 192 and then we brake. I uh, just want to show you uh, specifically where, I'm, where I chose my brake marker. So it's pretty much this Michelin board. As you can see, we just then slam it on the brakes and then wind down into second gear and take it very easy through the chicanes. Just make sure that you're going curb to curb to curb and then coming into third gear keep it in third gear as we go through this final turn and then just floor it and here's a version in the cockpit for anyone who wants it so as i said you go over the white line going into turn one uh, you try and hit the apex very late on this turn um, a lot of people typically go a bit too early here you have to brave the grass just a little bit just so uh, you can carry more speed going into the right hander and then this left hander and the same goes for the S bend so you touch the grass here and then you hit the grass here as well run some grass but don't touch the grass on the uphill left otherwise your car will bounce out if the rear tires make contact with that curb for the right hander up ahead you can see where the grass and concrete break there that's exactly where we're going to break um, it's very close to the third uh, brake marker as well chicane like i said uh, break very early and then begin accelerating before you hit that apex and then as you can see we're, we're pretty much about to touch the grass on the exit but it's really important that you do that because it, you'll carry a few more miles per hour coming out of the turn which will result in you having much greater speed as you approach uh, the end of this long straight coming to the michelin board we're going to break 193 miles per hour 
braking all the way down into second gear in this chicane, keep it in second gear and it's only once we reach the road Atlanta board that we are then shifted into third. Then the final turn, you come out wide, come back in, ride the tiniest bit over the kerb and then extend out as far as you can. Okay guys, so lastly but not leastly, the actual build itself. So. I'm going to talk you through the conversion first because when you're building the car this is very much going to dictate what you end up with. For us we have kept it as a stock drivetrain however the Aspiration we've given it a massive twin turbo so just great dump of horsepower and you don't actually lose much weight for it it's not even £20 so it's a worthwhile investment definitely recommend that um, in S class. Uh, when we go over to the engine side of things, we have actually not used anything, so it's purely just that conversion itself uh, because we want to save some PI on the more handling and grip based parts of the build. So, on brakes, we have the race brakes, we have race spring and dampers. For the roll cage, um, I did try it with the roll cage, um, obviously it, you know, it gives you back one PI but um, I actually found that the, the car just wasn't as responsive as I wanted it to be. Um, I think having it as a stock chassis actually makes it a little bit more flexible and helps it manoeuvre a bit especially through the first and second sectors, you know you've got the chicanes and then you've got the uh, downhill s bend. so um, I kept it as the stock roll cage, however weight reduction we've gone for race weight reduction so as you can see that's over 200 pounds that we're saving there and that does correlate with the amount of acceleration that we have transmission we've just gone with sport so it's only two more pi but you do need to adjust the gears there's just no two ways about it keeping it as stock uh, you'll you'll find yourself changing gears at the most awkward parts of corners and it, it just doesn't pay off well I think the uh, transmission set up nicely there so we've got race drive line and for the differential it's just no question you need to have that race differential otherwise you're setting yourself up to fail when building the car over to tyres and rims. So for the compound, we have gone for sport. Can have race, um, but the, the the thing with building a McLaren F1 is having it beyond even 6.3 on handling, you don't really benefit much out of it. The stats will say that you do, but in terms of the actual feel of the car, I don't think it's worthwhile. Um, the McLaren F1 is just not good as a high grip car. It's a car that you need the power to make it work. Um, so that's why we've kept it a sport tyre compound. 6.2 handling. Doesn't look like it's a lot, but um, it's more than what you need. So um, we've gone with that and made sure that we've got upgraded front tyre width. So we've put the front to the max at 265. And then for the rear, we have kept it as an... Um, 335. I initially did have it um, as maximum, but turns out you, you don't really need it. Having it at 355, um, the car's already got so much traction that you can afford to basically cut yourself down um, at a tiny bit of rear grip there, and that way you can fit inside uh, 800 pi. Rim style. Honestly, I do not remember what rim that I have gone with. We'll see if we can quickly find it right now. Uh, but whenever you're building, it's always worthwhile checking out the rims because sometimes it can shave you a lot of pounds and you're not having to spend a lot of PI on it either. So the one we got here is the Momo 10S. Now for the front bumper, we've kept it a stock. Obviously, if you really want to adjust grip, then by all means put a front bumper on. But as you can see, that's 4 PI that you have to spend. And for this car, because we're actually having it balanced between speed and grip, we don't really need the front bumper. Um, it's, it's not worthwhile. We're able to make the car turn in through the uh, by having springs that are set for a bit of oversteer instead. So um, we kept it a stock front bumper. But of course, we do have the rear wing, and it's just, you know, in, unless you're taking it to a track like Daytona or Le Mans, um, it, you'd be a bit of a fool to not have any aero whatsoever. Um, and that is that. Let's now take it over to the actual 
tune side of things. So tire pressure 28.5, 28.5. Gearing, um, it looks like it's set up for a straight up speed track, but it's just the way that the stock transmission is. So we've got it as 2.84 um, and this is really good, for, especially when you're in second gear going through that final chicane, as well as through the first sector where you've got third gear through most of them turns. So uh, 2.84 on the gears. Alignment, and um, we have front camber at minus 2.0, the rear at minus 1.7, the tow we've kept as 0, 0 on the front and the rear, the front caster angle we have put to 6 degrees, anti-roll bars we have got the front at 11.18 and then the rear at 13.98. So as you can see, uh, relatively soft both on the front and rear. But we've, uh, we want to do that because um, it just helps the car turn in as well as sit on corner exit as well. So as I mentioned, I wanted to make a very stable tune that can be used in lobbies around all sorts of tracks. And this just seemed to be a happy medium here. So going over to Springs, as you can see, obviously built it for some oversteer. So this helps the front of the car dip in more and it basically makes up for the lack of a front bumper, front bumper that we have. So 522.8 on the front spring, 814.6 on the rear. And then the ride height it is pretty high, but I think it's needed at Road Atlanta. Um, that otherwise the car was just very unsettled going through the first and second sections. So 3.8 on the front and then the rear height is 3.7. Damping for the rebound stiffness, we have the front at 10.0, the rear at 10.4, the bump stiffness 2.3, the rear 2.4. Aero can't adjust the front, but the rear we've actually put it all the way down 269. So, and, and this does seem quite silly because you think, well, if you put in the twin turbo, what's the point and um, giving it any downforce whatsoever but this that's because this car is actually built to be mostly a grip car it's not a full out speed car it's just the mclaren f1 in forza is very weird you need to build it as if um it's a speed car and then through the tune you try and make it a bit more grip orientated so having it this way it just keeps it very planted and um, you can obviously adjust it if you want depending on uh, the tracks that you're on and then as for the braking balance we've got that at 49 percent then the pressure we have at 120%. So like I said in my past video for the McLaren M8B, I like to keep my brake pressure now quite close to default 100. So I've just put it up a little bit. And then finally the differential and um, kept the acceleration at 100%. And um, actually want the tires to spin just a little bit on corner exit because that actually just helps rotate the car. And then for the deceleration, we've just put it to 10. And that's that guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, the tune is already shared, we've got a bunch of people that have already been downloading it since I first uh, made it public. Um, I've had the tune for quite a while, it's just I've been meaning to get around to making a video for you guys. I'm just super thrilled to have the McLaren F1 finally look strong around a track in S class and hopefully you guys will enjoy it in whatever races you want to take it in. So please do download it and um, comment below this video. Let me know what you think of the car, if there's any tracks you find that it's really well catered for. And also let me know um, if there's any other types of tunes that you want to have for different cars, whether that's in S class, R class, or even the lower classes, because I like to experiment a lot. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos. I shall be continuing with this tuning series and I look forward to making more car guides for you along with some more race footage of events that I'm taking part in. I'm also going to start doing some live streams as well. So thank you all to the new people that have subscribed. I'm thrilled to be at over 200 subscribers, but we always want to keep on pushing and get more people. So please join on board and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.